Good afternoon, my name is Josh from Cyclone to Oz and this is your detailed afternoon update tropical focus, particularly for Northern Queensland on Wednesday the 14th of January 2026. So like I said, a tropical update here, we're not going to be touching on severe thunderstorms or anything, this is going to be purely tropics because we do have multiple areas of interest that we need to keep close watch on now in the Coral Sea and across Northern Queensland with some potential heavy rainfall on the way as we lead up to Australia Day. Let's talk about the systems right now, we have the remnants of ex-tropical cyclone Koji out here around the Mount Isa area and this is concerningly bringing more rainfall towards northwestern Queensland, particularly to areas towards the north and the east of Mount Isa, where we have had some significant rainfall accumulations in the last two weeks. And this is really going to exacerbate some of the flooding concerns that we've seen here since Boxing Day up into Queensland's northwest. So we'll start off with this, but we've also got an area of tropical uh, activity out here into the Coral Sea. This is Tropical Low 14U down here, and that is expected to become a tropical cyclone out here around New Caledonia before it turns back towards Queensland. Impacts are not expected though. And we have multiple areas of interest that may develop as we head out to about Australia Day between the 20th out to the 25th of January, somewhere in the Coral Sea, also out into the Gulf of Carpentaria and potentially over towards Western Australia as well. So stick around for all the details on those coming up in the next 15 or so minutes. Let's start things off though with the remnants of ex-tropical cyclone Koji still kicking, would you believe it, a couple of days after its powerful landfall on the central Queensland coast. I mean, it really gave Mackay a good blow. Um, what we've had uh, here throughout the course of today is periods of heavy rainfall towards the north of Mount Isa. It's been nothing crazy. We haven't seen any sort of 150 millimeter plus accumulations but a few spots have picked up falls between 30 to 80 millimeters from these slow moving and pretty persistent thunderstorms with a new round of these thunderstorms here now pushing into the Mount Isa area as I'm recording this video which means they should be well and truly through Mount Isa by the time this video comes out. We've got the low pressure center located about 150 kilometers towards the north of Mount Isa. It's moving quite quickly off towards the northwest which means these showers and thunderstorms are not going to persist for a prolonged period of time but we will still see a little bit of moisture here tonight into tomorrow morning dragged in from the Gulf of Carpentaria which will provide us with a couple of showers around the Flinders and the Norman River catchments and we've also got more shower and rainfall activity here coming through central Queensland particularly through the central Queensland coast on the Whit Sundays and that's developing into thunderstorms right now as I'm recording this video with a couple of areas of heavier rainfall here towards the north of Longridge that has since whittled away as well. We do have some pretty big flooding concerns and it, we, that's best shown with the webcam footage. If we zoom right in on Queensland and have a look at some of the webcam footage here and towards the central parts of the state this is the black water reservoir right now and just have a look at how much water is coming through here. I mean, you wouldn't think that there's a road that actually runs underneath this water. So that's the weir there. There's trees all through here. And if we take this back to about two or three days ago and have a look at what this actually looks like, I mean, that's a land cruiser in there. That's a hundred series land cruiser that's coming through uh, the reservoir right now. And if we pull this towards the latest imagery, I mean, it's just completely underwater. So it gives you an idea of how much water is moving through this part of Queensland right now, a really, really significant amount. And we're seeing even more water start to pour in towards uh, this part of Queensland as well. If we zoom in on other webcam footage here through this part of Queensland, whilst a few areas are now beginning to drop, we are looking at water increases and the potential for moderate flooding around the Rockhampton area. Uh, in the next couple of days. Into northwestern Queensland, this is at Jenny Line here, thankfully fi uh, finally starting to drop a little bit. You can see that there's a little bit more of the flood marker here compared to what we were looking at 24 hours ago. So water levels are now really beginning to come down as we see some low tides here in the Gulf, which is really working to drain some of the floodwaters out of northwestern Queensland. But still, like when you've got water uh, or this much water on the ground here, you get another 50 millimetres, that goes right back up to the major flood alert without notice. So uh, even the smallest of rainfall and the smallest of showers coming through here, Will exacerbate some of the flooding concerns we're seeing in towards northwestern Queensland, which is not a good thing at all. Still a lot of water coming through here at Dumaji. Uh, this is the floodway. You can still see a lot of water in this area here. This is also the weir. Uh, those rivers are still very much swollen. They have came down a little bit, which is good news, but you can still see showers and thunderstorms in the vicinity. It's just not going to be helping these areas at all. So we really want this rainfall to clear out as soon as possible. And you can see on the forecast models, that should happen bar a couple of thunderstorms this afternoon into tomorrow afternoon, then out towards Friday, but this rainfall and shower activity clearing out to the Northern Territory by this weekend, which is good news indeed, just returning to a couple of afternoon or evening thunderstorms through Friday, and then Saturday and Sunday, the rainfall becomes pretty much strictly coastal based from this point onwards. So this is where the long range outlook comes into uh, play here, because there are a lot of details that I want to be talking about here. The first aspect of the medium to long range weather forecast is going to be out into the Coral Sea. Uh, Tropical Low 14U is located towards the uh, west of the New Caledonia Islands through here, and well out towards the 
northeast of Queensland. It's about 1,000 to 1,500 kilometres here offshore from Rockhampton out towards the northeast, and it's moving off towards the northeast as well, which means by this weekend it's going to get itself jammed up against Vanuatu before it makes that turn back towards New Caledonia, and then through here is where tropical cyclone genesis becomes a possibility, likely to happen sometime after Monday the 19th of January out to about Wednesday the 21st of January. We could be looking at a weak tropical cyclone impact on New Caledonia with a lot of heavy rainfall, but this is unlikely to be of any concern to Queensland at this point in time, just considering the fact that this storm is going to remain very far offshore. And if we also have a look at some of our winds in the upper levels of the atmosphere here and have a look at the jet stream, you can see that jet stream still blowing quite strong here uh, through uh, middle parts of Australia. It has weakened off a little bit over Queensland, which is allowing systems to sink down a little bit further into the Coral Sea. And that's where we saw Tropical Cyclone Koji come so far south for this time of year. Typically, Queensland Tropical Cyclones are a risk from about February onwards. It's quite unusual to see a cyclone that's outside of far northern Queensland uh, uh, from uh, January onwards. So uh, definitely Koji was a little bit uh, interesting and unusual, even though we are in tropical cyclone season for that matter. But if you have a look at the jet stream here, it is going to be pushing these tropical cyclones away from the Queensland coastline, which means even if this tropical cyclone does actually head for Queensland, it, once it starts interacting with this jet stream here, it's going to be pushed down towards Norfolk Island and then off towards New Zealand, being ripped apart by the jet stream whilst it gets down there. The only feasible way that this system ever comes to Australia, and I'm not talking about a realistic possibility here, I'm talking about the only logical possibility that this system could ever become a Queensland impactor if it was to be steered up in towards this direction here, and that is just not going to happen because of the upper level ridge that's going to be situated towards the west of Vanuatu. What I mean, and I probably shouldn't have said that because I know now a couple of people are quite worried, but that is just not going to happen. It's impossible for a tropical cyclone to traverse something through there because of the Corollius effect. It's going to be steered down towards New Caledonia and then eventually making that U-turn away from Australia down towards New Zealand. This track here is locked in. It is going to happen uh, in this way. Whether it makes it to New Caledonia as a tropical cyclone or not, we don't really know, but the low pressure system or the remnant energy of this system is going to be dragged down towards New Zealand. There's just no two ways about it at this point in time, but it's also not a concern for New Zealand because, I mean, it's got to get through the jet stream first and it will be ripped apart by the time it get, enters the jet stream. And as such, its interaction with New Zealand is expected to be very minimal at a worst case scenario. And I hope that puts all of the worries to bed for those wondering in Queensland. I've just explained to you why this system is not going to be in towards Queensland. That's what we do here. We explain why things are going to be happening and what's going to be happening. And we give the reason for why those things are going to be happening instead of just leaving you to figure, out by, uh, figure it out by yourself. So if you do enjoy that type of stuff, then please do consider subscribing. But I like to look at every single possibility in these updates. Now, just pulling these winds back to the surface level, you can also see that monsoon trough really does strengthen. We've got a good trough here running across central Australia. And then that's going to be connected to a low pressure system here in the Northern Territory, of course, with that low pressure system out here, 14U, that's going to be tracking off in that direction. And you can see that trough that's going to be running across the Cape York Peninsula into the Coral Sea. And this is where our thunderstorm hotspots and our rainfall hotspots are really going to pick up. And we could be seeing further areas of low pressure, like one here and maybe one up here. Uh, and whilst these are not likely to develop into full-blown tropical cyclones at this point in time, we're definitely going to be seeing an uptick in rainfall and thunderstorm activity from next week onwards. So we're talking about a build-up pattern through this week across Northern Queensland, and then a really release patterns we get through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. And by that release pattern, I mean a lot of rainfall coming through for certain locations across northern and far northern Queensland. And you can see that quite clearly on the rainfall forecast, particularly from Monday onwards. This is a look at five-day rainfall accumulations really starting to build up here across the Cape York Peninsula. Some significant falls are going to be possible because we're likely to see low-pressure system activity interacting with the monsoon trough here, and that's going to be swinging rainfall in towards the north Queensland coastline out of the northeast. This really does pick up as well as we head out towards the weekend and the week afterwards you can see significant rainfall accumulations or rainfall accumulations really do start to build up into some proper numbers here by North Queensland standards, even up above 200, 300, 400, even getting close to 500 millimetres in one or two spots do begin to build as we head out towards Australia Day, uh, around Australia Day as well, a few days before and a few days after. And you can see most of this rainfall here is going to be associated with low pressure trough activity, which is going to be dragging in those winds from the northeast here, interacting with that trough and then resulting in rainfall developing across the north and the central Queensland coastline. What that means is you're heading into a wet period. Definitely for, uh, don't uh, forget to pack the umbrella when you're going out uh, and make sure you do remain on top of the rainfall forecast. Now, the good news is I'm not seeing any forecast model or any kind of prediction right now that's calling for an absolute standout amount of rainfall. The GFS is calling for a couple of hundred millimetres. The Eastern WF is calling for a couple of hundred millimetres. The Axis is also calling for a couple of hundred millimetres. And I mean, at this time of the year, big deal. That's just business as usual type stuff. But we're not looking at a flooding concern here at this point in time across northern Queensland and far northern Queensland. This is 
business as usual. It will give those creeks and those dams a good top up. And we will likely see rivers approach minor flooding on, under the heaviest of rainfall, just considering how wet parts of far northern Queensland and even parts of northern Queensland are in the wake of a tropical low and tropical cyclone Kochi. But at this point in time, flooding is really not a concern right now. We're not looking at any areas that aren't going to be placed under flood watches or warnings. This is just business as usual type rainfall coming in for northern and far northern Queensland. We may see some areas of low pressure system uh, develop uh, offshore from the far north Queensland coastline. That's more likely to happen into the longer range aspect of this forecast here, likely around Australia Day. Uh, I'll be monitoring this quite closely between the 22nd out to about the 26th or the 27th of January. We may see a weak low pressure system either develop out here into the Coral Sea or developing here in the Gulf of Carpentaria. Either way, that will bring an uptick in rainfall to the, to the Cape York Peninsula. But the specifics in regards to exactly where this rainfall is going to be developing still not known at this point in time. Uh, just we know that if a tropical low does develop, which is looking a little bit more likely right now, we will be seeing a significant uptick in rainfall across pockets of northern and far northern Queensland. The good news is it doesn't look likely to produce tropical cyclone activity. It just looks like broad monsoonal low pressure system activity or maybe even rainfall depression activity. But there's no forecast model that's really on board with a tropical cyclone or an area of strong tropical low pressure developing across the northern Queensland area. Uh, so in regards to the tropical cyclone forecast, I really don't think that this is a concern whatsoever at this point in time. And those up in far north Queensland are not under any kind of alert or uh, notice for tropical tropical cyclone development throughout the remainder of January. Things do start to look interesting though in February, so keep that in mind and maybe subscribe to the channel and follow the Facebook page as well, because we do have a couple of signals out here into the Coral Sea through early February, which may result in Queensland tropical cyclone impacts. Just something that I've been keeping close tabs on now in the forecast modeling. Of course, we're looking very long range, so things are not just likely to change, but they're certain to change, but we will keep a close eye on the situation out here into the Coral Sea, because something may kick off in early February. Definitely something that I want to be keeping close tabs on, especially given in the time of year. And then uh, just to wrap this tropical forecast up, let's touch on the remnants of tropical cyclone Koji. As I said, moving up and towards the Northern Territory, and we are expecting that to interact with the monsoon trough this weekend around Darwin. And that is gonna to translate to an absolute metric ton of rainfall coming through into some places across the uh, top end of the Northern Territory. This is four day rainfall accumulations here from the Eastern Low Forecast Model. And you can see a few pockets here into the Adelaide River area out towards Bachelor and just towards the south of Darwin, picking up 600 or 700 millimeters of rainfall. So those are some massive rainfall accumulations that will definitely put a couple of areas under flood watches up here and likely cause some problems in regards to flooding up here around the Darwin area. Uh, but in terms of uh, significant rainfall accumulations, these areas, they can cope with 500 millimetres in a couple of days, no dramas at all. Uh, so this is not a major flood concern at this point in time, but it does give us a pretty solid signal that something is likely to kick off right now. Now, the remnants of extropical cyclone Koji are actually quite likely to redevelop into a tropical low at the very least, and they're likely to do so somewhere around the top end of the Northern Territory, hence why there is just a bucket of rainfall coming into the Darwin area this weekend. Now, this could shift a little bit further towards the southwest. It could shift a little bit further towards the southeast. In short, Darwin can expect at least 100 millimetres this weekend, but the big time rainfall accumulations are still not locked in right now. So we will keep close tabs on the situation for Darwin, but nothing is locked in per se at this point in time. What we're going to be looking at is where this system is going to go from that point after uh, thereafter, because it is going to stall around the Darwin area for a couple of days, Saturday, Sunday, and maybe Monday, before it either makes its mind up and heads out towards the Indian Ocean, or it makes a U-turn back towards Queensland. Either way, we are going to see low pressure systems develop uh, on either sides of uh, the Northern Territory. I mean, the Coral Sea low pressure system uh, slash monsoonal depression slash monsoonal trough is likely to kick itself off in towards the uh, last couple of days of January. And we're also likely to see another area of tropical low pressure develop out here in towards Western Australia. So these two are non-negotiables. And Tropical Cyclone Kochi kind of has the dealer's choice right now as to where it's going to go. Uh, it can either become this low pressure system out here or it can become this Queensland situation over here. So the remnants of ex-tropical cyclone Kochi, the options are open right now. I personally believe right now, just given the current state of the steering flow, it's going to uh, weakly turn uh, out towards the Indian Ocean, somewhere like this, and get itself jammed up into the Kimberley region and produce a boatload of rainfall around here. But that's just my take right now, and I'm kind of basing that forecast based off feelings as opposed to facts and conjecture. The steering flow right now, just given how strong the monsoon is and how strong this monsoon is going to burst, will more likely take this system uh, from the top end of the Northern Territory back towards Queensland into the Gulf of Carpentaria, where a boatload of rainfall is going to be possible in this white circle. Uh, if 
you can make sense of this map here, then please do consider telling me in the comment section down below because I'm now completely lost and I don't blame you if you are as well. Mr. Swiggle needs a few more crayons. I think that point is very, very clear. But yeah, ex-tropical cyclone Koji, a few options open, heavy rainfall locked in for the top end of the Northern Territory. We just don't know exactly how much or exactly whereabouts it's heavy rainfall is going to be. And then a couple more systems also locked in, one out here in towards the West Australian borders and one likely between the 20th out to the 25th of January here over the far northern reaches of Queensland. But which one tropical cyclone Koji could become, we don't know. In terms of the chance of redevelopment into a tropical cyclone, not looking overly likely at this point in time. It'll need to spend a lot more time over water. Uh, and actually in saying that, because of all this tropical activity, that's probably a question on everybody's lips right now is, are we going to see another tropical cyclone in the next couple of weeks? But to be honest, the forecast modeling is not favoring tropical cyclone chances. There is that possibility that Koji does head out into the Indian Ocean and really gives it a red hot crack for the uh, West Australian coastline. You can see that on this forecast here, but sometimes the long range forecast, particularly from the GFS model, which is what we're looking at right now, gives us a pretty wacky solution. Uh, but in terms of full blown tropical cyclone chances or tropical cyclone impacts around Australia in the next 10 days, chances are not looking overly great, that's for sure. Tropical cyclone chances really kind of in the toilet right now in the next 10 days. And that's pretty typical when you've got a very strong monsoon. Typically when you've got a very strong monsoon, you're just looking at a rainfall threat. Sometimes though, uh, monsoon troughs and monsoon lows can become strong tropical cyclones. It's still definitely a fact of the forecast that I will be keeping close tabs on. And if you want to keep close tabs on the weather situation as well, then make sure you go and check out the Facebook page. Lots more updates coming out over there, including a full tropical update coming out in the next couple of minutes over there as well from the, when this video goes live. If you have enjoyed this update, then please you can consider leaving a like and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. A massive thank you to our channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. I can write on the show without them. And as always, the support is massively appreciated. I hope you've enjoyed this update. And that's going to be all for me today. And I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.